What's going on guys, it's your Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another video. And today, right now, we're in Boston, Massachusetts, hometown, home state. Flying out pretty soon because uh, we're starting this video in Boston. We're gonna end the video in Australia, in the Gold Coast. So to commemorate like this 27 hour long travel that I have, I want to do something different and do more of a personalized log. So if you care more about the poker hands, you want to skip just to that. There's a timestamp here for when the poker hands start. But I uh, want something a little different to capture the journey, the travel, the experience. First time ever going to Australia for a WPT series. So really excited about that. So get ready for the coolest 27 hour trip. Um, I'm not really looking forward to this, but at least I can make some content along the way and shoot some cool B-rolls. So let's get into it. Pretty bad, pretty bad dad joke, huh? All right, whatever. It wouldn't be a real across the world flight if, if I didn't have like some sort of a bad beat story. So in the first like B-roll that you might've seen, it might've popped up red when I tried to scan my tickets. Turns out I almost didn't get on the flight from Boston here to LA. Now, luckily I got a seat, but I signed up, I bought and fully paid and checked in all that fun stuff. I had a first class ticket this entire trip, the whole 27 hours, because when you fly 27 hours, I kind of won't need to fly first class. But somehow they got rid of my seat, my first class ticket here at United. And uh, I almost didn't get a seat into the flight, but I, I bumped, I got downgraded from first class to economy. But luckily this was only like a six hour flight. The real flight is the one coming up, which will be from here, LAX to Sydney, Australia. 15 and a half hours to go. From what I know right now, hopefully crossing my fingers, I have a first flight ticket, what I paid for, which is very, very expensive. But uh, yeah, touchdown in LA. First leg of the whole journey completed. Two more stops to go. Conveniently, I'll serve some champagne. This wasn't supposed to be a WPT Global uh, promo, but you know, as it turns out, anything can be. And I'm actually going to Australia to play WPT anyways. So um, if you guys want to hop in and play from, you know, almost anywhere outside the US, use the code down below. I'm playing uh, 2550 100, just chilling on the plane right now. And uh, if you use the link below, I have a straight flush draw, holy shit. Do I bet the straight flush draw? I'm gonna bet the straight flush draw. Let's see how this hand goes. But if you wanna use the code VLOG for a deposit bonus on your first uh, deposit, if you're new, no straight flush. I sh probably shouldn't have bet that, but yeah. I'm gonna just play a little bit of this and degen and gamble. But if you guys wanna hop in and play, click the link down below. We look down at Jack-9 offsuit. It seems good enough to raise, so why not have at it? Just what happens when you travel. Honestly, I find myself playing this a lot when I go to the airports. It's a great way to kill some time. It's a great way to gamble. Great way to get the poker itch in uh, with WPT Global. So let's try to win this hand. And I end up winning it. So there's that. Cheers. So here's the winning some money before we go. But you got stop sneaking to the bathroom and snoring so <sighs> 28 plus hour long journey, one downgraded flight to economy, one misconnection that I didn't really talk about, and we're fucking here in the Gold Coast from Boston, Massachusetts to Gold Coast, Australia. I'm so excited right now. The, the, the sky, the sun is out. It's beautiful here. And 
let's play some poker or something. I don't know. I got a text from my buddy Mike. He said he's thinking about doing surf, like group surf lessons, which is so cool. I'm excited. I'm gonna go check in. Let's let's fucking go. We're here in Australia. Yet. Can't wait for the vlogs to come out. I'll be sitting there. Check that five building. Yep. Hey, noopsie. All right, safe to, holy f I didn't look at the view until I stepped out. Wow. Oh no. Oh my God, that's the view. I started recording before I looked outside and I came out and, and looked, oh. Okay, so I'm at my um, at my Airbnb. Th th that's the view. This camera is not doing it justice. Anyways, the video is finally about to begin. I'm settled in, catch the 30 hour trip, I got a nosebleed in the middle of trying to get some food, checked out some surrounding areas, and now it's time to do the thing that you all clicked for, which is poker. And uh, coincidentally, I'm doing the thing where a lot of people don't like where I'm just gonna max late reg a tournament. Um, right now, today, what's going on right now is a 1650 Australian dollar mystery bounty that converts to, wow, you can see, you can see the waves. Look at the waves. Just so, it's just so, so peaceful. 1650 mystery bounty, it translates to about like an $1,100 USD mystery bounty. So we're going to max late reg that. We'll see how much content's going to come out of it. I'll definitely add more poker, but poker video starts now. We're gonna do some poker stuff. You go downstairs, get some chips, go play a tournament. I'm gonna sit back and enjoy this view for a little bit though. Holy shit. Onto the 1650 mystery bounty we go. The very first tournament we're gonna to play here in this Australian WPT series. Let's get into it. We're in level nine. We have 40,000 starting chips and we pick up ace queen off suit in the cutoff. There's an unknown gun raise to 2,500 and here in position of that, I decided to call and not re-raise at this specific time. Small blind and big blind comes along. So multi-way to a flop, which is king 10 deuce to spades. Small blind player does something somewhat unconventional and leads for 3,500 and when action folds all the way back to me, Interesting spot. Um, I've never seen this lead before, so maybe he has a good hand like a king or something. I decided to make the call because I have an ace. I have a gut shot straight draw to the nuts. Let's see a turn. Heads up we go. It is the three of clubs, and this time my opponent decides to bet once again, but the good old same bet of 3,500. Now I'm even more confused. Is he trapping me? Does he have a weak hand? Ace queen, once again, cannot fold for this price. Can we see a jack on the river? please. It is the four of diamonds. So uh, just a whole lot of nothing. He Once again, my opponent bets 3,500 and it seems really silly at this point to give up and fold. I mean, I could certainly like, you know, kind of go blaster mode and raise him, but I I sheepishly fold. It It is a little embarrassing, to be honest, to call 3,500 flop and turn and now folding. Um, it looks a little bit sus, but I have ace high and, uh, you know, Nice hand to my opponent. Moving right along, the next hand pick up a better hand. This time it's ace king on the button. There's an early position shove of 8,500. And well, I'm certainly not going to be folding. So I make the call. Everyone ends up getting out of the way. We are up against pocket nines, good old flip. And I see a king high flop. Somehow, some way, the player in seat one calls out the 10 of clubs turn. What a magician. Pretty impressive to call out the exact card to see on the turn and river ace. I end up holding and winning this one. So I don't double up, but I do chip up in a nice manner. Progressing to level 11, blinds have increased to 1k, 2k, and I pick up pocket sevens in the low jack. And under the gun raised to 4,500 here, I decided to make the call with a playable pair. Then the button goes all in, but it's not a whole lot for 33,000 total. The ungun player gets out of the way and folds in here. I'm actually not very happy to see this, to be honest. I thought about it for a while. Is my opponent going to be shoving worse hands like sixes, fives, fours, all that fun stuff? 
I don't necessarily know. I haven't seen how these players play, but there is only for 16 big blinds. There's a lot of chips in the middle and sevens. Let's see a call hoping to flip. No flip. My opponent has pocket tens and I'm drawing dead when he flops a set and I'm drawing even deader when he turns quads. That is too bad. Uh, my stack gets crippled losing to quads. And uh, we're moving on to the next level here. I don't have many chips. 22,000 in my stack and a big blind's at 2,500. I have kings and hearts on the button. There's an early position raise. I am all in here with 40% of a royal flush. And my opponent calls with pocket fives and five's gonna flop a set. That's gonna be hard to come back from after a set here. Looks like everyone's hitting a set against me today. And just like that, I am out of event number one in the $1,650 mystery bounty tournament. All right, bullet number one, tournament number one in Australia, not meant to be. I have an issue here, unable to film cash games technically right now. I'm gonna try my best to. So that's why I recorded this tournament. Like, you know, we'll see. The, the next clip you'll see is either gonna be a cash game that I'm gonna sneakily try to record or another tournament later on. But step one, touchdown in Australia, lost, which is gonna happen a lot of the time. So everywhere I go, I just cannot film it seems like. Moving forward, maybe I can't record a sneaky cash game given that interaction, but we'll see. But I'm dead in the tournament. All right, immediate plot twist. Five minutes later, I have chips in hand. There's a 2550 game that might be running right now. So I'm gonna hop in and try to film. I'll report back if I can film, or if I get bopped again by the floor. But we're playing 2550 Australian dollars. So it's a little bit smaller compared to USD. We'll do all the conversions later at the end of this video, but hopefully things go well, because I'd love to film some cash game action here in Australia and try to spin it up. So um, yeah, it's the biggest game running right now in the casino. Let's hope it runs. Into the cash game streets we go. I buy in for 10,000 Aussie dollars. We're playing 25.50 and we're playing four handed as the table just opened up. Pick up fives in the cutoff and raise it up to 125. Get the button to make the call and we see a flop of six, three deuce, two hearts, and a club. Very cool flop here with second pair, gut shot, lots of things going on for me. I check it over to my opponent and he bets out 100. For 100, I could check raise sometimes, but I think my hand just wants to call a lot. So we're gonna see a turn, which is the Jack of Clubs. Card over my pair, brings in the backdoor flush draw. Lots of things happening here on this board. I check it to my opponent once again, and he fires up for a larger amount this time of 500. I think here, uh, facing a $500 bet, I am not gonna be folding, right? Like having two fives is pretty powerful and strong, but I certainly don't know how I'm going to be able to win this pot moving forward on the river, but let's just hope to improve. River comes the nine of clubs, backdoor flush draw gets there, not a card I wanna see, not the card over my pair, all the things that make it quite bad for me with pocket fives here. So I check into my opponent and he fires out 1100 this time. Um, I, you know, I think I could bluff catch t at some frequency, but for the most part, I'm gonna be folding a lot of the time. I mean, having the five of clubs is quite nice but not super relevant. So I'm gonna let this one go and believe my opponent for having a nice hand. Moving right along, the second hand in this cash game, I pick up king five of clubs on the big blind. Small blind ends up limping over to me when everyone folds and I raise up to 200 bucks. For $200, he makes the call. So we're gonna see a flop of ace, queen, deuce. I mean, this is as good of a flop as I could ask for, right? Don't think he's gonna have many strong aces, not many strong queens. He checks over to me and I fire out 125. Don't think I need to go super large to win this hand. And for 125, he makes the call. Going to see a turn, which is the 10. Another lovely, lovely card to look at because now I have a straight draw. Improved with some equity. He checks it over to me and I'm gonna fire out a little bit larger this time of 450 bucks before seeing a check raise of 1300. That is going to force me to snap fold. So nice hand to my opponent. Looks like everyone has the best hand against me today for the first two hands. Let's try to climb back with the good old five seven of clubs. This time we're in the small blind, action folds to me here and I decide to limp it over to my opponent. And then the big blind raises to 200. Five seven of clubs, very friendly, very fun cards to play. So let's see a flop. I make the call and we see ace eight five rainbow. 
Here with bottom pair, it's not a whole lot, but action goes check check, so I don't feel too bad about my hand. When the turn comes in ace, now I feel even better about it because it's less likely he's going to have many aces and I lose to less hands. I check it to my opponent and now he fires out 150 bucks. I'm a little bit suspect about this bet here, to be honest, after it goes check check on this flop. How strong can he really be? We're going to find out because I make the call. Turn comes a jack, so... This card really shouldn't change a whole lot, and I check it to my opponent once again, hoping to get the showdown, but my opponent fires out $500. <sighs> I mean, I feel like I'm getting put into the spot yet again. I mean, look, you guys are seeing, hey, I have fourth pair. Why am I even thinking about this situation? Well, I don't think this jack really changes a whole lot, to be honest. A lot of the hands that are air balls that want to bluff immediately, like jack 10, queen jack, jack 9, they all just want to bet on the flop. So... Uh, not thinking this changes a whole lot. I think he has, I guess, uh, of a slow played ace, very few value combos, or a bunch of missed draws and hands that want to barrel and get me off of an eight or five. So I'm going to be a little bit sticky and make the call. And my opponent has value, pocket queens. Hmm. You know, the first two hands, I decided to fold. The third hand, I said, let's take a stand and call and bluff catch. Turns out my opponent just had it. So uh, I'm 0 for 3 to start off, which is not the best start, but we are going after it here with Queen 10 offsuit in the hijack. Let's win this one, shall we? Because we're in dire need to win a hand. I raise it up to $125, and we get the small blind and big blind to make the call. So three ways to a good-looking flop this time. I flop top pair, which is as good as I can ask for, in queen, nine, deuce, two hearts. Both players check it over to me, and we're going to bet for value because... Because it's hard for me to have value. I bet $250 before seeing an immediate check raise from my opponent to $750. Big blind folds. Oh my goodness. Come on. I feel like I'm running into resistance all day today. I mean, I'm definitely never going to be folding here. You know, I have top pair. Maybe he can be bluffing, but we're going to find out because I make the call for $500 more and we see not the best turn. It's the seven of hearts. Now with the hearts completing... I don't even have a good kicker with my 10. He fires out $1,150, and you see in an instant, I snap fold. Can't even buy a hand. Look, top pair is not very strong anymore with the flush getting there. I lose to all the better top pairs. I lose the sets, lose the two pairs, and also, of course, flushes. So 0 for 4 to start things off, and, well, we're going to need some help because the next deal, I pick up Ace-King. Let's go. A real premium this time, and they're suited. We're on the button, and there's a cutoff raise to 175 I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to bump up the price, and I decided to make it more to 500 In hindsight, I actually probably should have just raised to a larger amount. Maybe I'm a little bit jet-lagged. I've been awake for a while. It's my first day still here in Australia, so um, yeah, probably should have made it more, but whatever. 500 to go, and my opponent calls. So we see a flop of jack-10, six, two spades, and a diamond. I don't have... A very strong hand yet, but I do have a very, very strong draw. And when my opponent checks over to me here, I decided to bet a little bit larger than normal and size up to $400. I mean, I just want to get all the money in here, right? I have two over cards. I have a flush draw. I have a straight draw. I have the world, as they call it. My opponent calls the 400 and we're seeing a turn, hoping to improve. It's the king of diamonds, which is lovely, lovely, lovely. Brings in a backdoor flush draw here. My opponent checks one more time. And I'm going to be firing here. Look, top pair, top kicker is all I could ask for. Along with the redraw with the spades, we're bumping up the size of the pot. And I fire out 1,600. But my opponent doesn't look happy. It ends up folding pocket nines. So look, I didn't win the maximum here, but I did win the pot, and that's the first hand I've won this entire cash game session. So I've got to show this at the very least, and it's very good for morale. Let's keep the run good train going. I pick up king eight off suits. Not really the best hand in the world, but there's a $100 straddle on board, and I'm in the big blind. Action folds declared my right. He makes the call for 100, and I am not going to stand for this. I mean, king eight isn't really a great hand, but... Uh, it is good enough to want to battle and get in there. So I raise up to 450, probably not approved by most good poker players, but you know, we're here for entertainment. Anyways, the straddler calls the 450, which is already not very great. And the small blind calls as well. So now we're going multi-way. The pot is ballooning, probably one of the bigger pots we've played all day so far. And I have 
a very bad hand. Anyways, the flop comes king, queen, four, two diamonds, and a spade. So all things considered, I can't really complain about having top pair in this spot. Small blind checks it over to me here. I decided to check because my top pair isn't even that good. And I think the straddler is going to have a strong hand a lot of the time. Anyways, the straddler does fire out a bet this time to 450 bucks. And when the small blind calls this 450 I am in a world of confusion. Certainly could check raise sometimes. Uh, certainly not going to be folding. But like I said, this is by far going to be the biggest pot we're going to play tonight. And uh, it's only on the flop. So I just decided to be a little bit cautious and make the call. I mean, you know, my eight kicker isn't very good, to be honest with you. So we're still going three ways to a turn with the pot ballooning up. And it's the nine of spades. Pretty scary card, honestly. Two flush draws on the board, Jack-10 gets there, two pairs get there. I'm not really loving the situations. And luckily, action goes check, check, check. So no more money gets put into the middle here. But we're going to the river, which is the six of hearts. So all of the draws brick out, essentially. But this time, the small blind player fires out a bet of 1650 Betting into two opponents out of position always, always seems really, really strong. And I just don't feel great about my king, to be honest here. I mean, I do lose to a whole lot of hands, but I also beat a whole lot of missed draws and hands that just won't be able to win unless they want to bluff at it. So I'm unfamiliar with my opponent, but I definitely have to give him credit for being able to bluff. I'm not going to be folding my top hair. I feel like I've underrepped this hand quite a lot. So I call hoping the person behind me ends up folding and luckily it ends up happening i tank call other player folds and the small blind shows king deuce and my eight kicker is going to play so whew, lucky to win this one here honestly uh, when my opponent is value betting here i just can't really expect to be ahead a whole lot but i found one of the hands that i beat a worse kicker of a king and just like that i'm going to scoop the largest pot of the night and that's a pretty solid way to end this session isn't it all right, that's gonna wrap up this session. Uh, to conclude a very wild, I guess, a whole 40 plus hours of my life and journey, no better way to do it than right behind what you could probably not see because it's not well lit. Uh, little skyline of where I'm at. Um, Broad Beach is what it's called. I was, I was blanking on the name. Anyways, <clears throat> to recap, I'm here in Australia. Did I lose money in the tournament? Yes. Did I lose a little bit of money in a cash game? Yes because the numbers are I was in the game for $15,000, out of the game for $14,805, which is a little loss of 195 Australian dollars. And if you were to convert it, it's like 66 or two thirds of what I lost in USD. But you know what? I might've lost money today, but I'm here in Australia and how upset could you really be when you have this view that would look much better during the daytime? Um, when I wake up tomorrow morning. Anyways, that's the journey. Thanks so much for watching. I'm hoping to have more videos and more vlogs from this trip because that would be really, really cool and very fun. And uh, thanks for watching. No more rambling. This video has gone on long enough. Thanks for following along and hoping I run a little bit better in the next video.